early 90s, the refugee camps in eastern Nepal have been home to an entire generation of Bhutanese of Nepali origin who were evicted or who fled from southern Bhutan. Many were born and brought up in the camps with no recollection of the country they call their motherland. For years, they have lived in huts in seven camps built by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, and have been supported by its partner agencies. Right from the start, the Bhutanese refugees set up schools in the camps with the close support of Caritas Nepal. For more than 20 years, Nearly all the Bhutanese children and young people have gone to school thanks to the Bhutanese Refugee Education Program. Well, this program as such, it was started in late 1991 uh, when the people have gathered at the uh, river Maidar and the children since they were uh, just uh, left at class they were being collected and the, the senior students and teachers they had started running their school. After the establishments of other camp, uh, as the camp got established, the schools also simultaneously got established because the Bhutanese themselves uh, were engaged in that and they themselves established and ran their school. And it is as such it is called by the Bhutanese for the Bhutanese and of the Bhutanese. The Jesuit Refugee Service has been working closely with Caritas to run the program by, with and for the refugees. Right from the beginning when UNHCR invited Caritas Nepal to take responsibility for the Bhutanese refugee education program, it was the bishop who invited the JRS to Nepal. Knowing that JRS is involved as well as it has experience in working with the refugees, uh, Caritas Nepal looked upon JRS as the right organization to give leadership for administration of the education program. The program has succeeded in providing inclusive quality education and in achieving close to universal literacy rates. Between 1992 and 2006, no less than 15 rounds of bilateral talks were held between the Bhutanese and Nepalese governments. However, the talks did not result in a conclusive durable solution. By 2006, hopes of repatriation were fading fast. व्यापारिक विश्रामपछि समाचारमा पुनः स्वागत छ विगत दुई दशकयता पूर्वी नेपालका झापा र मोरङमा बसोबास गरिरहेका भुटानी शरणार्थीहरूलाई पुनर्वास गराउनका निम्ति अमेरिकी सरकारले सहयोग गर्ने भएको छ शरणार्थी सम्बन्धी मामलामा कार्यरत संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघीय नियोग यूएनएचसीआर का अनुसार करिब 70000 को संख्यामा रहेका शरणार्थीहरूलाई अमेरिका लगायत अस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजील्यान्ड डेनमार्क र बेलायतले पनि पुनर्वास गराउन सक्ने मनसाय व्यक्त गरेका हुन् अब आर्थिक समाचारको पालो Acting on a suggestion by a Jesuit working with the JRS, the international community put forward a durable solution in the form of resettlement. Since then, 92,000 Bhutanese refugees have gone for resettlement in eight countries across the world. Resettlement has affected education back in the camps in more ways than one. It has disrupted because teachers and students alike get their travel papers during the academic year. Those still in the camps are always anticipating their own departure and the pool of resource people that the education program had nurtured patiently in the past is depleting fast. <laughs> Six years after the resettlement started, there are 26,000 refugees plus remaining in the camps. Of these, a majority has applied for resettlement. Many are keen on joining their families and friends abroad. 
My name is Pramamayatama. I live in Sansara Camp, sector C1, heart number 57, eh, 58. Uh, I came from Bhutan. I, uh, I, am, I have uh, five people in my family. They are uh, my one son, one daughter-in-law, one grandson, my father and I. I going to uh, Canada. Going to Canada. Uh, orientation waiting. Oh, you are waiting for the orientation. Uh. Okay. There are some refugees who think that resettlement deviates the focus from repatriation, a solution that many still cling to as their right, although it has been denied them for so long. Some <laughs> Then there are those who think that integration in Nepal is the next best alternative, given their historical and cultural ties with this country. From China, Punarbas mo bayro desh dani na bani. Zati farginsu apnu su desh farginsu fargin din na bani mo Nepal ma basun jeli mat neo marag din mar neo. Ideas and hopes apart, things on the ground are highly uncertain. It is estimated that five to ten thousand people will remain in the camps after resettlement. This group includes typically vulnerable people such as the elderly and those with special needs, as well as some refugees who have married into non-refugee families. What will happen to them? Will they remain stateless? Will they find themselves without the support that many will need, given their vulnerability? Repatriation to Bhutan seems to be a distant, unlikely possibility. Integration in Nepal is easier said than done. The government does not seem to be open to the idea, in a country with its own infrastructural and economic... Yeah. The Bhutanese refugees have been on life support for at least 22 years. What is going to happen to those who cannot or who do not want to access the durable solution of resettlement? They deserve a new life no less than their brothers and sisters who have gone to third countries. A new life that guarantees their dignity and their rights that gives them a future with hope. They deserve to be truly part of a country where they can give and take. However, as things stand now, their future is uncertain and it is no exaggeration to say that no one knows what will become of them. Approaching the Tanting River. As you can see, this is the unpaved section of the road going to Kunubari Camp. During the monsoon season, from June until middle of September, this river swollen to many times its size and it's impossible to cross. During that time, we have to stop all IOM, all IOM activities. Uh, going to Kunabari camp.
gonna now enter Kunabari camp where refugees are waiting for pickup to go to the mark. And some of them are also going to the local airport nearby. This area used to be a uh, forest and every year there are still herds of elephants that migrate from nearby India into the surrounding area outside Kunabari and some of them actually got into Kunabari causing great damage. That's over there is the uh, food storage area for WFP. <laughs> Bhutanese refugees line up for checking prior to entering the bus. Prior to entering the bus, refugees have uh, slips that they show to come to the mark either for medical screening, pre-medical departure, exit permit interview, um, USCS interview, IOM pre-screening, or for counseling also in IOM compound, the mark. Refugees carrying luggage for their departure to Kathmandu today.
According to tradition, before living on a long distance trip, refugees get a blessing scarf to wear around their neck and also tika on their forehead. Without call sign one, three, six packs over. We are now heading back to Damak. Um, one bus will carry refugees to the local airport nearby for their flight to Kathmandu. Now crossing the Mai River on our way back to Damak. It is one of the holiest rivers in Nepal for Hindus. Thank you. 
मानसेरी शोमेरा ध्यान दे आओ ना सना आओ ना बात करना आओ ना आओ ना Para mí sí me llegará ahí.